Welcome to the second installment of WCAT News for 2017. I'm Vernon Palmer. And I'm Summer Dean. And once again, we have a full show for you today. We'll start off with Gracie Andrews and her crew for the second episode of the new Canton South High School series. Gracie? And welcome to WCAT. My name is Gracie Andrews, and I am here with Chris Knoll, the business uh, manager for Canton Local. Today, we're going to talk about the academic wing. Welcome, Mr. Knoll. Welcome, and thanks for having me, Gracie. I appreciate it, and I'm always excited about uh, talking about the new Canton South. How far along are we on the academic wing? The academic wing of the new high school is nearing completion right now. Um, when you walk into that room, it is almost totally finished. The one piece that we still have yet to go is to hang the interactive projectors in there. Um, and then next week, Mr. Green and some other people are going to go in and start cleaning and waxing floors, which will then be ready to go for business. How many classrooms are in the academic wing? In the academic wing, and that's a tricky question because of the way the high school is broken up into four different parts, but in the academic wing, I would say there's anywhere from 32 to 34 classrooms, um, and then there are also more classrooms throughout the building. Is there anything different about the ap academic wing that we do not have at our current school right now? Several things. One, um, the lighting is great in the new building. We have LED lights in the classroom that are dimmable. Um, it's climate controlled here at the old high school. A lot of times it's really hot or it's really cold. Um, rarely is it ever just right. In the new building, we will have a control on that so that throughout the year the, the temperature is correct. Um, we'll have interactive projectors um, in each classroom. And there will also be a couple of classrooms that have some uh, movable walls so that we could have either one big classroom or you could cut that half classroom in half and have two regular size rooms. Okay. Um, will it be easy to locate um, like our classes in the academic wing? Yes. If, if you think of um, the second floor at Faircrest or the second floor at Walker that's set up in a rectangular shape with classrooms all around it, um, the new high school will be that same way on the first academic and second wing. floor. Um, other than you know some of those things that I already mentioned, I. I Another piece that I think is very exciting for our learning environment is the furniture that we'll have in the new building. Um, we, we do have a couple of sets of furniture here in the old high school that we're trying out and getting ready for for next year, but there will be a combination of some low seating, some high seating, some soft seating um, in the classrooms, and then also you'll have some of that same type of seating out in the hallway in collaboration spaces so that way uh, students have more opportunity to get into those areas and work together on projects. Sounds great. Thank you so much for coming and giving an update on our new high school. I hope you come back from time to time to give us more updates. I would love to, and thanks for having me. And thank you for watching. Please tune in to our next episode of the new Canton South High School. Back to you, Vernon. Thanks, Gracie. We are looking forward to your next report on our new high school. Next, as the winter sports seasons are winding down, let's check with Sean and his story for our Wildcat Bowlers. This is Sean Blackman from WCAT News today with a sports update. We're going to interview the bowling coaches, Coach Bill and Tina Sparks. Coach, coaches, can you explain a little um, something about yourself? I, I've been bowling for uh, 41 years. I've uh, been doing it. I gained a love for it when I was uh, the age of the kids that are uh, bowling on the bowling team now. I really enjoy this. I do a lot of coaching. I do participate, and uh, I am uh, very fortunate to uh, have my family involved with it. As well. I um, have been bowling for about 15 years. I got started as a coach with Canton South about two years ago. This is our second season. Um, have been uh, really excited to bowl with the kids. I work full-time as a financial analyst. I do a lot of data modeling and analytics. Um, absolutely love what I do, but I really enjoy working with the kids, and I'm excited every year when the season starts and just sad when it ends. Co coaches, can you um, tell us about basic steps of a bowling match? We have. The way ours is set up is that every team gets a chance to bowl in sectionals. Um, if you make it as a team, that's excellent. But there's also the ability to qualify as an individual. Um, at that point, then you bowl districts, and if you, if you make it as a team or as an individual, once you've qualified, then you get the opportunity to go to Columbus and to Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl, which is a uh, tremendous experience. We were uh, very fortunate last year that we had one of our bowlers make it all the way to state. And it's a great, great experience to be down there.
Coach Hina, can you tell us a little something about your bowlers? These teams have had an amazing season this year. They've had a, an incredible run at um, almost tying the division title. Um, we are 12 and 6 in total, which is fantastically um, improvement over last year's scores. Um, they have worked their butts off, and they have beat some of the best teams in our division. I, I couldn't be prouder of what our girls have done this year. Coach Bill, can you tell us a little something about your bowlers? Um, the, this bowling season has been a lot more successful than our first season as coaches. Um, I think that uh, the team has been a lot more uh, receptive to a lot of the ideas and things that we've done. Uh, from a record standpoint, we more than doubled our win total this year. Uh, we did actually get seven wins this year out of our uh, 20 matches, which is uh, much better than only a couple of wins last year. Uh, we've had a lot of good individual performances. I've seen tremendous improvement um, over the uh, some of the guys that are my returners from last season to this season. So I have been uh, really, really pleased with uh, how things have went this year. What's South League affiliation? There is the Stark County High School Bowling Conference, and that entails, I think, 21 or 22 different schools that are broken down into divisions. And we are in the American division for that at this point, which we bowl against a lot of our NBC foes. But not all of the NBC schools do have bowling teams. What are your um, future expectations on, on the next upcoming team? I've had the privilege of coaching some amazing young women. I, I stressed to them at the beginning of the season that, it, that our number one priority is to help them not only learn how to acquire the skills to be great bowlers, learn to love the game, but also build the character and become people of character in our community. And I have to say we've had great success in finding students that exemplify all of those standards. And this program has really grown, but I couldn't be prouder of the people that are coming through the program and they're graduating um, as Canton South Bowlers. I think our program is going to continue to grow. We're, we're expanding in the middle school. We now have all four teams. We have a varsity and a gen, uh, JV. Uh, we had more people show up to try out for the team than we really do to have spots for everyone, and that is exciting to see. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the future of the bowling program is going to look like because it really is one of those sports that just about anybody can do and anybody can, can learn to acquire the skills and be successful at. I'm very fortunate that uh, we had a lot of bowlers come out this year. We, over the course of both teams, we had 30 bowlers come out, um, and we were able to fill all four teams. So we had both varsity teams and JV teams. Uh, from the boys' side, a few of the guys that uh, were bowling last year actually did a lot of practice over the summer and were able to uh, improve tremendously. So I'm going to use that as my uh, expectation for the kids. Get out and practice. The more that you can throw a bowling ball, the better off you're going to be. And I think, you know, with the uh, young crop of boys that we had come up this year, I think we've got a very good future. Uh, one thing that we did start this year is we went down to the middle school and have had a number of the middle school kids come out once a month to bowl to try to be able to uh, expand that uh, pool of people that want to uh, bowl with us. And I think that's going to be a good thing for the future, and we will continue to do that and expand it. We would like to thank both coaches for coming in today to answer the questions we asked them today. Uh, Sean, thanks for uh, asking us to come in today. I am uh, very appreciative and very um, honored to be able to speak with you this morning. Well, thanks for having us, Sean. This has been a great uh, conversation this morning, and I um, hope that we have a chance to talk again in the future. Go Wildcats. We'll see you next time on WCAT News with a spring sports update. Back to you, Vern. Thanks, Sean. Our next story should have the interest of any senior looking forward to college. Alexis has a how-to story on seniors preparing to move on to college next year. Hi, my name is Alexis Arnold and welcome to WCAT Today. I am here to talk about preparing for college and I have a step-by-step -step pro process for our 2018 seniors. The first step in preparing for college is to plan ahead to avoid being overwhelmed. The second step is to stay on top of your grades your senior year 
is the most important because that is what colleges are really focused on. The third step is to play, pay close attention to deadlines that are given to you. Be responsible. Another thing you can do is go on a college visit. Select schools you're interested in and schedule a visit with them with three, four or five schools that you're interested in. When applying, when applying to colleges, pick four or five and check what type of test required and their deadlines. Also, when you take the ACT or SAT, you should send your scores right to the colleges of your interest. Most schools ask for letters of recommendation. It is important to give your references a two, week, two weeks before notice. And the last subject is transcripts. They should include, first, a list of all high school credit courses you took in the final grade. Your to second, your total credits. And third, the number of absences dash tardies each year. Thank you for tuning in today, and my name is Alexis Arnold, and I hope this helped you. Thanks, Alexis, and thank you for tuning in today for our WCAT broadcast. We'll see you soon, and remember, WCAT, WCAT is, is wild, wild about, about the cats. cats.